Now, what was next for you when it came to to work? What was where did you go from there? You're now on a monthly book. Um, how many issues did did Doctor Mirage go, or how many um, did you do? <clears throat> I drew up to issue thirteen. Oh wow! So you were uh, on it for. But I think I had over uh, a year. One or two fill-in issues. Okay. So, um, the thirteenth issue was a lot of fun. We had like uh, Walt Willie, who was an actor on. All my children mm-hmm. appeared as himself, <laughs> and that was a kind of at the height of uh, the early '90s comics industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and books were selling great, you know, back then. Oh yeah, the, um, the bubble wasn't. The page rate was very, very low, mm-hmm. but the uh, royalties were, you know, very, very high. high. Yeah, and uh, like I saved up money that first year, and I bought my mom a house. Oh wow! In Miami. Um, That's incredible. I mean, just tough of, you know, doing, you know, oh, one, I mean, one, well, one story arc in, or two story arcs. In. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think uh, part of it was just, uh, well, like growing up watching sports, right? Yeah. You always hear about the rookie, uh, you know, signing a contract. The first thing they do is, like, they buy their mom, mom a house, house That's amazing. Car, yeah. That's a testament to. So, um, like, a lot of that really, uh, you know, that was like a goal. Like, once I started working, I was like, okay, I'm going to save up money, right? I don't need the money because college is free. Yeah. Right, I already have enough. Like the first thing I bought was a small Samsung 13-inch television. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went down to Canal Street, all these electronics. Sh- have you been in New York? Oh, yeah. yeah. So like, Canal Street had all these electronic shops and sneaker stores, and I bought a uh, Samsung 13-inch color TV because I didn't have TV for like two or three years. The first two or three years in school. Wow. Uh, and a Sega Genesis. <laughs> uh, Sounds like a typical 20-year-old college kid, Yeah, right? so those were the first two things that I bought. And then I think I bought a pair of sneakers. Um, but that was it. And then the rest of the money, I just, like, saved. I That's didn't spend, awesome. I didn't spend any of it. Maybe, like, occasionally ate out a little bit. But even yeah. when I went to eat out, uh, it was still, like, very frugal. Yeah. Um, I didn't start, like, buying a lot of clothes or anything. Um, they just needed a TV and the Genesis. All the friends would come over and play in my dorm room. Um, and uh, that was it. That's amazing. Yeah. And then after after that, like after that <coughs> that story had kind of run its course at Valiant. What? How did you kind of go about your next job, or like looking for work after that, or did you did you decide on architecture? Did you want to finish doing that, or what was the? Uh... Well, so um, at that time it was my third year in school, and I had uh, the first two years I had um, uh, jam packed all my classes, so I was gonna. I was on course to graduate uh, in four years. Wow. Which and, is a year uh, early. So, yeah, yeah. So, because uh, I started taking, like, winter courses. Because playing on the basketball team, you had to be on campus during the winter room, which is, like, a month and a half, where usually most of the students are off. But they offer, like, classes for a month and a half where you go to class every three days out of the week. Yeah. And the first semester, the first winter, like, you just play basketball, woke up, went to practice, uh, ate lunch and then maybe had a game in the in the yeah. evening. It's like an NBA life, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but then the second winter, I was like, oh, maybe I'll start taking classes, and then because uh, if I'm here, I might as well take some classes. And then uh, <clears throat> so I was on course to graduate. But then once I started working and the the work comics work started ramping up, I was like, well, maybe I can. Um, I didn't want to drop out because uh, school was free uh, on the scholarship. I knew if I if I had dropped out. I would not come back. Yeah. And if I did come back, I'd probably have to pay for it. Of course. So, um, so I'll tough it out and I'll take out what's going to be two years and I'll re-expand it back out to three. Um, and then figure out my curriculum uh, and kind of work around there. So, uh, but then I was at Valiant for about uh, four or five years. I had signed, they assigned me to a, an exclusive contract fairly quickly. Wow. Um, there was a whole bunch of young guys too. Like I started at the same time as Sean Chen. So Sean and I started at the same summer, although he got a few months ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was like other guys like Tom Ryder and, uh, I don't know, a bunch of other guys. And, uh, <clears throat> even Joe Casada. I mean, he's, well, but Joe was there before me. Yeah. Joe, Joe was, yeah. was higher up. Wasn't he at the, he, I well, thought he was a, a top, like a higher up executive at that he, point. Uh, Joe was, uh, he had started. He had started at Valiant, mm-hmm. and then he went over to DC, and he Marvel DC, and he was doing stuff for them, 
And then they brought him back to work on Ninjak. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, he was, like, the hottest thing. Um, and, uh, and then after Ninjak, he went and did Ash, I think. Kind of around that. And then after that, he ended up doing the Marvel Knights, mm -hmm. their double stuff. Yep. But there were a lot of guys at Valiant that were, um, they were young, very hungry. Um, and it was, like, a ton of fun. I mean, I was 20, 21. Um, when we had Deathmate, which was the crossover with Image, mm -hmm. uh, it was a great concept, right? And you, you could feel like the enthusiasm and the energy because Valley was also like a old school comic book company in that they had a bullpen. Yeah. Like nowadays, I don't think you're gonna have a comic book company with a bullpen. No, Just I can't too think much of a single one. Well, maybe Top Cow has some guys work in house. Yeah, but or, uh, I mean, <coughs> not even I mean, not even in their offices. From what I've seen, yeah. there's no one drawing in the house i mean you can go there and work but there's not like a bullpen like that yeah so but the valley had an office in new york city it was a bullpen they had artists uh inker pencilers inkers colorists letterers they even lettered on the boards back then and production uh, all in this like an open space so you can just kind of walk around and look at whether other people are working if deadlines are particular tight people will jump on a particular project um so there was a lot of energy you know there and the industry was booming. Everybody was happy. Uh, when they announced the death mate thing, it was like, oh, wow. You <laughs> felt like, uh, you know, this. You were a part of something like you were. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think I've always been like a, a a team player. Yeah. Even though I'm like an only kid, I've always wanted to be, you know, be a, like a team player. And so it was just like a tremendous amount of um, enthusiasm. Um, and then we did a tour, a bus tour. So we did, I spent like a week on a tour bus. Mm-hmm from Santa Barbara all the way down to San Diego for Comic-Con. That's cool. So we'd stop by like three stores a, a day and then, you know, stay at a hotel. So you're like rock stars <clears> at this point. Exactly. I mean, because it, it, it was the Black Crows touring bus. So on the bus, they had, you know, bunks to sleep and they had like a dining quarter and <laughs> a quarter place where you can play cards or whatever. That's um, so cool. Yeah. So it was like the rock star life. 